I told you I would pull this old, this is the old carburetor from the log splitter. I told you I'd pull this apart and show you what I meant. So we take this bolt out of the bottom, and if you look, you can see how how much crud has built up in the bottom here. This is just that's just a leftover corrosion. The float, just so it's not flopping around in our way. Take that off. Put that aside. Nothing. There was nothing in the float. The float was. The float's still good. I may save some of these parts. Actually, I'd probably just throw them out. <laughs> right here is where the main jet is. Down that hole. Now the trick is you need a screwdriver that is exactly as wide as this hole is. The screwdriver blade has to be able to just barely fit down this hole. It's basically a tube. It has slots in it for the screwdriver. So you have to be able to fit the screwdriver in here and unscrew it. Well, it's the ears for the screwdriver slot are broken off and there's nothing I can do to get that out of there. It's completely seized in there, so it's toast. I can't clean it out the way it is. Pretty much have to remove it to clean all the little orifices. This carburetor is shot. This is the original carburetor from that log splitter, and that puts it at probably 20 plus years old, maybe older. Anyway, that's it for the carburetor. Received the new fuel pump today. There it is, all shiny and brand new. All right, I'm gonna remove the old fuel lines. So this line, which uh, is not marked on here, this line comes from uh, the, the crankcase of the engine. This port is marked P on the new pump, probably for pressure or pump or something. So I know that goes to the crankcase. This line comes from the fuel tank. So we're gonna pop these off. Just give them a little squeeze and move them out of the way. And then just give it a little twist, loosen it up. And then we'll slide these off. Easier said than done. Yep. In there. There we go. All right. And what I will do is I'm going to take this apart to look inside. So we'll do that. We'll do that later. So right now I'm just looking at the fuel line coming from the tank. And it appears to be okay. So we're just going to leave that one alone. The one coming from the crankcase, that one looks okay. I am going to replace the piece of fuel line that goes to the carburetor, though. And I don't know if you can see this. There's the letter P right there. And that goes to the crankcase. I'm going to get these little caps off. So the one from the crankcase, we're going to put there. And then we'll slide the, the hose clamp back on. And the same with the line from the tank. Push that on. Get that out of the way. Make sure it's fully seated. And then we'll put the 
hose clamp on. I'm just going to leave the uh, little red cap on there until I get the carburetor installed and then it's just a simple matter of running a new fuel line. So this is the brand new carburetor. It comes in a completely unmarked box. So that should tell you something right there. <laughs> nice shiny new. This is different. On the original, that's a metal tube that comes out. This one's a right angle plastic or nylon fitting of some sort. Everything else looks like it's uh, the same. In the box, they give you two gaskets. This is the outer gasket, the one that goes up against the um, air cleaner housing. This is the inner gasket. It's got some non-round holes. I'm not sure what that's all about. And I'm assuming it goes, I'm assuming you sandwich it in there like this. This is a heat shield, different kind of high temperature gasket material. I'll show you that here in a second. Also in the box was this limiting cap. Um, a lot of carburetors, they put limiting caps on the adjustment screws so that you can't turn them too far one way or another. So this will sit on here like this. And that heat shield goes in here. So first thing we need to do is bend that shield so that it matches up with the muffler. I'm going to lay this shield. I'm just going to eyeball this a little bit. Kind of get the holes lined up from up here. And then I'll see where I need to bend it. And I'm just going to take a pencil and mark this. So I realize that not everybody has one of these, but, and you could, you could use a vise, but my, the vise that I have available outside there is too small. So I'm going to have to use this. This is called a finger brake. Just going nice and easy here. Okay, so there's my bend that I needed. I just realized I didn't have to do a 90 degree bend, but that's okay. We can just unbend it a little bit here, and there we go. That's what we want right there. Okay, that could have been bent a little bit closer, but it's too late now. I've already bent it. See that little tiny spring? That spring goes in that, not the hole with the white bushing, it goes in the other hole. So we're going to rotate this up, get that there, oops, get that in there. Sorry, I'm trying to work around the camera here so that you can see. And then we're going to get this spring in the hole. There we go. Put that in there, like that. Get one of the bolts in so that they line up. There we go. We'll get that one started. And then we'll get the other one started. Thread these in by hand for the moment. Okay, now we're going to grab my incorrect 532nd socket. And we're going to tighten these up. That operates freely. 
That's the throttle. Now we're going to put a piece of fuel line on here. So what I have here is some regular yellow type fuel line. We're going to try this. I don't know. I don't know how well it's going to work because of the, the temperatures. But it may be okay. If not, I'll have to get another piece of regular line and put it on here. And when I bought the fuel line, they included some hose clamps, so that's nice. A couple of those. Okay, so we'll just push this on. The nice thing about this line is you can see the fuel. Not that that makes that much difference, but you can also tell if the line is going bad. This clamp is probably not even necessary. Okay, now we'll pop this off. I want it facing out so that I can actually get to it. And we'll push this on here. There we go. So one of the advantages of being able to see the fuel is when you're if you're troubleshooting, you can look in the line and see if the fuel is going through. Now we're at the stage where we need to start this thing up and test it and get the carburetor adjusted. So I'm going to reach around underneath the fuel tank and turn on the fuel. Okay. And I see fuel. So I'm not going to start it just yet. I am going to pull, and I don't know if you can see. If you can see the see the fuel in the line. See it moving. Okay. The next day. After a great deal of messing around. I discovered the reason I couldn't get the uh, engine to start. The fuel in the fuel tank had gone completely bad. Like it turned into water. It would I could start it with some starting ether and it would sputter for a second, but then it would quit. And I messed around and messed around. And finally, I was like, there's only one thing left, and that's the fuel. So I drained it out, put some fresh fuel in it. And now it runs. So we are ready to do an, a, a carb adjustment. Now, according to the service manual, they want 1750 RPMs. There is no idle adjustment on this. It's just, and, and the instructions are confusing. They tell you to adjust the idle, but there is no idle adjustment. So I don't know what the, I don't know what that's all about, but anyway. There is an idle screw right there, but that's not used because when you start it, this thing is essentially full throttle. The throttle linkage is down here. I've already had it running. The engine's already fairly warm. I'm gonna start it up again. And then I found a little rubber plug, which is actually a, this is actually a vacuum line plug, and it just fits over that adjustment screw. Because I was wondering how I was going to turn that thing while the while the engine was running. So I decided that what I would do is put this plug on there, and then I can reach in here and fiddle with it, get the adjustment just right. The instructions for this are fairly confusing. <laughs> they tell you to turn the screw all the way in then all the way out, which doesn't make any sense, and then find the midpoint. None of that makes any sense. In, in this case, we're going to set the RPMs with the throttle, and then we're going to adjust the screw, the mixture screw, until you turn it one way, the engine will start running rough, kind of make a note of where that is, and then you turn it the other way until it starts running rough, and then you put that in the middle. Rough one direction, rough the other direction, and then that 
you want the midpoint of that. That's the way you normally do it. I don't know, really know what the instructions were talking about. We have one of these mini tachometers. It's a, it's a tack and an hour meter. These are fairly cheap. We're going to put five wraps around this one. All right, and then now we'll be able to, when we start it, this is kind of like an in inductive pickup, and this will automatically switch to RPMs when I get it started. I'm going to turn the volume way down on this because it's extremely loud, and you're not, probably not going to be able to hear anything I'm saying. I've already fiddled with this a little bit, and I'm not really clear about what's going on with this thing. And I'm going to turn this mixture screw all the way in until it stops. I really need a better arrangement for this. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm going all the way in until it stops, and then I'm going to back it out one and a half turns. So now we're going to go out one and a half turns, and that should at least get the machine running. So there's half. One. And a half. I'll show you this. Get you a close-up of the throttle linkage here. So this is the throttle linkage here. And this is kind of like a, I guess this is the top speed adjustment screw. So when the linkage bumps up against the screw, that's as fast as it's gonna go. So I'm gonna be messing with this to get the RPM set right. And hopefully I don't have to do much else with the mixture screw. So all I did was back that mixture screw out three quarters of a turn to smooth it out just a little bit. I don't think it made a heck of a lot of difference, to be honest. And I'm not inclined to worry about it. It's running. We're going to call it good. I told you I was going to take apart the fuel pump just so I could show you kind of how it worked. I've already taken the screws out. It's really not much to it. It's just a couple of... Uh, rubber diaphragms, which act as uh, kind of check valves, one-way valves. Okay, so this portion is the crankcase pressure, I guess you'd call it, which causes this diaphragm to operate against this spring. And as the pressure in the crankcase changes, this diaphragm moves. Then we have this next section, which is basically, this is the inlet from the fuel tank. And what happens is fuel goes in here. As the diaphragm, the diaphragm above this operates, this is another diaphragm. This serves as a check valve. So fuel comes up through here it can't go back down this direction, but it can go back down through this hole. 
On the opposite side is another one of these little diaphragms. And this is contained with this diaphragm. So that keeps the fuel, goes comes in here, goes out here. There's a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, a raised line on this diaphragm and that fits in this groove. And that's what keeps these two chambers separated. Okay. So in here, out here, and then when it when the fuel goes out of here, it comes out this, and this is the piece that broke off. This goes to the carburetor. So let's see if we can show you this here. So right in the bottom of this chamber is the outlet for the fuel supply to the carburetor. All right, anyway, that's that's about it. And this just is like a cover, it doesn't really do much. It's got a couple of uh, holes in it for ventilation so this diaphragm can freely move. A spring, or uh, yeah, a screen here, and that allows this diaphragm here to move up and down freely. And that is about it. That's the function of the uh, fuel pump. If you found any of this useful, click that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks very much. We'll see you later.